I'm Johnny Vaughan. Ah! I've struck brass, gang. And this is Steve Brooker, otherwise known as Mud God. I actually want to change history. He's one of a select group of licensed amateur archaeologists known as mudlarks who scour the banks of the River Thames, searching not for buried treasure, but for hidden history, and whose discoveries have changed our understanding of London forever. There's stuff in that mud that no one's ever seen before. On the Thames foreshore lies over 2,000 years of history just waiting to be discovered. And that's what does it for me. But larking's no job for those afraid to get stuck in. To wade through time, you've got to be prepared to get your hands dirty. Armed with little more than a trowel and a lot of patience... No! no wait, wait! Steve's agreed to share with me his decades of knowledge and experience. It's cold! We'll race against time and tide to get to the bottom of London's muddy history. Oh, yes! Our adventures on the foreshore will propel us on historical quests that range from the sublime... <laughs> To the painful... Ow! To the downright disgusting... Oh, man, that rinks! Oh, God. Out the shed, out the shed. As we become... Mud Men. <laughs> on today's Mud Men, I strike it lucky and get my hands on some big old jugs. This was... The container. This was everything in life. While Steve gets to sample some culinary Tudor delights. This is a history show. It's not The Good Father. <laughs> and a broken piece of pottery leads us to investigate the witch hunts that led hundreds to their death. She's a witch! Today's Mud Men comes from Greenwich, literally meaning village on the green. It's home to the National Maritime Museum, the Old Royal Naval College and the Royal Observatory. Walking along a pavement here, feels like stepping back in time. Greenwich has always boasted a very strong royal connection with a royal hunting lodge and a royal palace existing here since before 1300. It was also the birthplace of both Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. These strong regal connections mean that come 2012 and Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee, Greenwich is going to be made one of only four royal boroughs. On a personal note, I have to add, I think it's also easily the most spectacularly beautiful place in London, without a shadow of doubt. Good for Greenwich. I must say, uh, Steve, I was really, really made up when I heard we were kind to Greenwich. It is my favourite part of London. I'm kind of obsessed with the maritime history. I love the observatory up there as well. I've been there many times. There's such an old world feel to it. And that, yeah, that's what I like about Greenwich as well, you know, because there's so much history. But the thing yeah. I like about it most is we have the Trafalgar pub down there. Imagine the dandies sitting in the window there with their yeah. mistresses, yeah. looking out over the mudlarks and chucking out a sixpence, yeah, for the mudlarks to roll around in the mud. You know, showing off in front of the mistress. I tell you the other reason, of course, I find Greenwich fascinating is because it is the home of mean time. Time and tide meet here at Greenwich in, in perhaps the most literal way ever. You know, so I find that quite exciting. So uh, let's hope that's reflected in our larking today. Because, of course, we have Tudor dumps now. I here. sort of ended it there, Steve. It was quite that good. Was Greenwich may be the home of time, but that's one thing we haven't got on our side. With the tide coming in, time is mean for the mud men. There's only 90 minutes before our hidden past is lost. I'm one of only 51 mudlarks licensed to dig up to one metre. Johnny has a foreshore permit allowing him to scrape up to three inches, but Greenwich is a world heritage site, so we can only scour the surface of the foreshore and we can't use the tools of our trade. No! Do not use the trowel! Steve, I know what you're trying to do. Back off a the, second the, and the, let the man strike. The, the, Got a licence to use this thing, yeah? I'm licensed to go three inches down by the Port Authority, so just back off. Eyes only. Eyes only, that's it. No detector, no trail, no scraping whatsoever. Eyes only. So we, we're up against it, but it's such a great area. No, put it away, put it away. Goodbye, old friend, but not adieu. The shoreline is an ever-changing landscape, constantly being eroded by two tides a day. So what we don't unearth now could be lost forever. Fortunately, Steve and I aren't going it alone. As always, he's brought along his mud crew in the shape of husband and wife team GM and Steph, Rock God, the Permatan granddaddy of Larking Mackie, and of course the ever faithful Mudhound Stolly. It's a superb Tudor area. Okay. Now, of course, we're going to be looking for those Tudor bits and pieces, so of course. What we're... like? 
lace chapes. Okay. Bear yeah. in mind, jugs, bits yeah. of. Then we're going to be looking for tokens. We, we get lead tokens down here, bits and pieces. So have a look. What can you see? Anything? Mm. The erosion that's going on here, you can see where this stuff is coming to the top. So can you see anything? Check it out everywhere. Right, look for the Tudor pins, a telltale sign. Okay, we've got Tudor pins, we've got oysters here, we've got bones. That looks like a Roman oyster there. Oh, hey, you learn. Oh, the knee pads. The knee pads are getting closer. <laughs> a Roman oyster, and, and yeah, not a Roman fatter. oyster, but that is a Roman oyster, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they, they were normally fatter. Because it's had more time to wear down? No, or no, were they actually flatter? Just less meat, less meat. And of course, the medieval and upwards, a lot fatter, a lot okay. more meat on your, on your oyster. So you're saying oysters have become bigger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, beefed up. Okay, who knows where they're going to go, you know? I can see something. Now, yeah. I'm there, is I will give you the hot or the cold. Oh, sorry, hang on, wait a second, wait a second. Have you seen something? Yeah, you know, I, I've got to find it. Yeah, Have I you can, actually seen something? I can see something. So we're probably yeah. playing hot or cold. Oh, right, I love that one. Go on. Hot, 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 Cold. Hot, 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 cold. It's in this area here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so easy to see. You can't see that. No! no wait, wait, no. wait. No! What? what? <laughs> you moved it, you moved it. What? What have I moved, you fool? <laughs> you, you moved it again. Okay. Look, 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 look. Ready, ready? Check it out. Can you see that? What does it look like? Yes! yes. I thought it was a stone you see. I didn't see what is that? Ah. It looks like a button. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a 16th century button. Okay. Maybe late 16th. But, of course, Tudor period. We're there, we're there. But you can see why you thought that was a stone. Look yeah. at that. So, into the erosion. Yeah. Now, I, I've spotted something again. Just here. Look yeah. at that. What is that? Is that off a... Oh, hang on a second. Now, it, uh, you can... What does it look like to you? A comb. It's so a that comb. looks like a comb. What do you notice about this Tudor comb, apart from it's broken? It's, it's hard to tell you because, of course, this side is missing. But okay. look yeah. at the teeth on this side compared to how the teeth would have been on this side. So they had wide teeth and narrow teeth, like on modern... Like, like we have half and half on, on modern combs. Precisely, but on modern combs, we yeah. don't use these for lice. No. We were infested with lice. Yeah. So, of course, this side would have been used for styling. Yeah, yeah, but not for us, Steve. Yes, for me and for you. You're, you're a bit, uh, it's, 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 it's a bit Steve, sparse Steve, up there. Steve, Steve, the viewers have probably already decided in our heads down shot who has more or less hair, all right? So, check it out, yeah. This is the knit side. Yeah. So of course this would have been brought through just to pull out knits. So Tudor combs, admittedly sometimes you have two sides of knits, but this one would have had normal styling. Yeah. Would have been so long. Sometimes decorate, highly decorated, but we have these in wood down here. Now what happens is you put it out exactly the way that you did, and because it's in wood, it just breaks up. But because this is made of bone, of course it's intact and it will stay intact. What are you looking at? <laughs> it's an inverted wedge. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, Without okay. lice. Yeah. With hardly any time left, I've sent Johnny off to see what he can find on his own, while I check in with my fellow mud men to see what they found. Jim, it's bucket inspection time. What are you doing? Yeah, not doing bad as it goes. Had um, my earliest pipe. Oh, yeah. Early 17th, wasn't it? Yeah, it was not 1580 yet, but we're getting there. It's probably about 1600, 1620. But yeah, a really nice pipe. Yeah, I'm chuffed with that. Of course, being a 16th century one, it's not like uh, church wardens, yeah? This thing's only about this long. Yeah. Whereas when we go into the old church wardens, you know, sometimes up to 36 inches. So that's nice. What else you got? 17th century lead tokens. Oh, lovely. Six Very nice. Flower. The old nice petal design. Trading tokens were used between the 17th and early 19th century as a substitute for small change. The token was, in effect, a pledge issued by individual traders redeemable for their goods. So what else? Uh, oh, I'll ah, tell you. Yeah, hey, I've hey, spied it. The, the star find. Best star find. Lovely. Bell of mine. And that's a big beast as well. So we're talking age-wise from 15th onwards, I suppose. This is probably like 16th century. Uh, and it would have been big. I mean, we're talking the belly on this thing would have been around there. Of course, used for beer. But lovely find, John. Really nice. Yeah, sure. Show me where you had it from. Was it out there? Sometimes I feel a bit left out because they all find things. And I don't. But I was a bit reassured because Steve has told me that when he started doing this, he, he didn't find anything either, ever. And he was just stunned at people doing it. And then you get uh, Larker's eye. Got a few uh, lead tokens. Occasionally, Larkers have finds up that can be worth a few bob. But for us, it's not about buried treasure. It's about hidden history. And even the most insignificant object can be a priceless clue to our capital's past. Oh, Chape, a Tudor Chape. Just had literally just picked that one up with 
the little mount holes in the top there. Ah. Beautiful. So, of course, many uses for these things. We would have had laces coming off of our shirts, yeah. off of our jackets, off of our tra trousers. The equivalent of your shoelace. Exactly, yeah. Your shoelace has them on, so this is, this is the equivalent. But nice find because, of course, we've got all these Tudor bits and pieces coming up, and it just shows you that Greenwich is a good Tudor area. Okay. So what else have you got in there? Looks good. So yeah, hey, there, yeah. more better mine. Yeah. Of course, GM's just had one up, yep. and of course, he's would have been about this large. Your one shows the beard, which yep. he's doesn't. And then an even bigger piece. Hey, hey well, look at the size of that. This is bigger than. Imagine GMs. how big that would have been. Like a small football, really. Yeah, really huge. That's a massive one, yeah. And I don't know if you even noticed about this, but if you look how horrific that face is to how nice that face. Well, is. obviously each one was individually made, so yeah. depending on how you felt that day, you might make him an angry-looking man or a happy-looking. Well, of course, yeah. You think the guy tried to bamboos, yeah, exactly. so you'd hate this guy. Yeah. So I mean, this. If I was making it, this would be my better yeah. mine. Whereas maybe this was his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or his child that exactly. made this one. I know. But yeah, but totally yeah. different though. But yeah. yeah, great finds. But it's just, just showing you the size of these yeah, beasts. Yeah, huge. You know, these guys, are, it's extraordinary what they can spot. I mean, they can come a beach and just pull coins off it really easily. And you know, I haven't, and I've done this a few times now, and I, can't, I still can't do it. So I'm really looking forward to the day I start to get my eyes. I'm getting better, but the respect you start to get for these guys is, is uh, extraordinary. They really have built up a really good eye for this and you can't fake it. Steve's called time on our scrapeless search and it looks like I'm going to leave empty bucketed. But it seems some of Steve's mud skills might be rubbing off on me after all. Hang on a second, what's this? Coming up. Just 